And I said, hey, what's your name? <laughs> I'll give you a penny. And that's when I first met Wesley Williams, who turned out to be maestro. Welcome to this week's episode of The Gracie Note. I am here with the one, the only, Farley Flex. And he is being honored in Scarborough on the Scarborough Walk of Fame. Congratulations. Thank you so Congrats. much. How does it feel to be recognized in your hometown? Well, you know, it's, it's a humbling thing, um, you know, to any form of recognition for things you do um, that bring you joy. Yeah. You know, so um, yeah, it feels great. It's great that um, you know the community recognizes my contribution, both on the entertainment side and especially right. on the community side. It's as as a fan. Can I please, please? I'd love to ask you because one of your artists was Maestro. Yeah. And can you please take me back to that moment when you first heard his music? Can you explain your emotions? Hearing that demo for the first time? Absolutely. Well, it was actually prior to hearing the demo. I first met Wes okay. in a, there was a roadhouse restaurant called um, Wizards <coughs> in Scarborough. And, um, oh, in Scarborough. Yes, yeah, absolutely. He grew up in Scarborough as well. And he's actually a former recipient of this honor right. as well. Right. But um, what happened was we had a little bit of a, a rap battle, if you will, with, with the door staff who tend to be slightly older. And Wes, uh, actually, and the younger, my younger brother, Francis, who um, was in the same age group as Wes and some of the other bus boys back then. And um, so we had these little rap battles back and forth, and we were doing well. And then all of a sudden, they got really good, and I wanted to find out how they got so good so quickly. And one of the guys directed to me, directed me, um, actually, the gentleman who turned out to be Wes's DJ. His younger brother worked there as well. Oh and he directed gosh. me to the kitchen and pointed at this guy who, who was back to the who had his back to the kitchen door in the restaurant and um, he said, That's that's how we got so good. And I said, Hey, what's your name? <laughs> I'll give you a penny. And that's when I first met Wesley Williams, who turned out to be Maestro. So that was my first encounter with Wes. And then a couple of years later when I was just finishing university, that's when he um, he reached out to me to try and you know, impress upon me his desire to, um, I, I think he was actually, he was leaving school as well, but to pursue a music career. Right, yeah. And um, I offered my help. He saw me as someone who understood business to, enough of, of an extent to assist him, yeah. and I, which I was very interested in doing. And that's where it all began. And, you know, we had a lot of road trips together where he would yeah. recite his rhymes to me, and I knew that he was prolific wow. as a poet. And in terms of delivery and you know the depth and the alliteration and all the key aspects that make poetry engaging and that, that's when I really fell in love with his capabilities. It takes a strong, I think, a strong person to foster talent, to encourage others, to help them to rise up because it can't be easy for an artist on their own to say yes I'm good enough, yes I can do this. You know it takes other people around them to help them and you seem like you're one of those people who is positive, who is motivational, who can help others grow. So for you, how how do you do that? How do you focus? Well for me it's it's um, I, I, I enjoy working with people who have a great sense of self. And Maestro is at the pinnacle of that list uh, in terms of his strong sense of self, what he wants. I mean, his, the whole vision of Maestro Fresh West was his vision. I just facilitated his vision. Um, but what, what, to answer your question more specifically, what you do is, or what I do is, yes. Yes. When, when someone recognizes their own skill sets, I just offer them my perspective of what I recognize in them. Right. So hopefully, if those things aren't necessarily identical, the two lists, then my list is sort of adds more to their perception of self. You know, let's say Maestro thought, okay, I'm a good rapper, I'm a great orator, I, I write well, etc. If I if I see, oh, but you also look great on camera, you also perform well on stage, right. and I'm augmenting his perception of self, uh -huh. which builds confidence, right? right? right. And to, you know, so we worked in that way, a very, very cohesive sort of approach to artist management. The people I work with, whether it be in the community capacity building or in the entertainment industry, it's about doing what we call an asset map. What, is, what are the assets that you have, all encompassing assets, and how do we 
channel those into that one direction that is targeted at your goal and right. turn your dreams into goals. Mm -hmm. you're, you, you support youth, you foster new talent. Can you tell me about your, your projects? Because you yeah. have so many. Books. Yeah, I've got some really cool projects. Yeah. Um, you know, on the sort of community capacity building side, I created a model called Real School, which is reality education and applied life skills. And that's really a very model. Cool very cool. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's really all about um, diffusing that sort of consistent message to young and predominantly black youth, but let's call marginalized youth in yes, general, yes. who may not have all the dimensionality of interest because of the circumstances that they live in. So what media tends to do, whether it be intentionally or not, does it's kind of almost irrelevant, but young people see the sport of, they see the NBA and they want to be on the court playing basketball. They see music videos, they want to be the rapper or the singer. So what, I, what Real School does is blow it out and show a kid who may not be a great rapper, but wants to be a rapper, that they're also really good at drawing and they can be a graphic designer in hip hop. Or they're really good, um, their time management's great, they can work as an entertainment manager, or they can go get a law degree and be an entertainment lawyer. It blows out the infrastructure to be really what is the most important factor in keeping the Beyonce's, Jay-Z's, uh, Weekends, Drake's at the top of their, their careers. They have a, a team of people who all love hip hop and love the music of the, the whoever the artist is, they love it as much as the artist does. They just have a different skill set. So, so we identify the interests, personality traits, and skill sets of individuals and align them to appropriate roles in industries that they're interested in. And you know what's great about that? You get to it before college and university. Oh, any, yeah, any age. Yeah, nine-year-olds. It doesn't matter. It's another really important project that I want to mention. Yeah. And it's called Crowded Gig. Uh -huh. And Crowded Gig is a, is a convergence of crowdfunding and live performance. Uh -huh. So essentially what it does is um, it challenges the artist to identify uh, the distinction between followers and fans, yes, yes. right? You can have a video on YouTube, get 4,000 views, but how many of those people can you translate into buying a concert ticket mm -hmm. to come and see you when you're the headliner, exactly. right? So Crowded Gig challenges the artist to identify that and supports. Mm -hmm. uh, we support through a challenge, yes. right? So um, once you identify, you reach into a market, you identify a venue in that market, mm -hmm. you have to, from the venue operator's perspective, they want to make sure at least half the room is full. Mm -hmm. So the artist has to sell what are called plickets, which are pledged tickets oh, to the cool. tune of 50% of the venue's capacity yeah. in order to get a confirmed slot in that venue. Oh, wow. Right, and once they've achieved that, the you know, traditional promoters are also part of the model where they get it from 50 to 100 in capacity and the money's better, the learning process is better, the opportunity to use that to influence a successive um, venue operator to say, I just sold up the Alpha Combo, yeah. right? I want to come play your venue in Mississauga, right? And then the receptivity starts to increase. No, but no, no, but no. you continue to create great music and yes, nurture yes. those relationships so more followers get through the strainer every time. And now you have fans and bigger, bigger, bigger fan base, and you can now sell tickets to bigger venues. Yes. Those people will buy more likely to buy your merchandise. Everyone who's listening to the whole album and everyone who's just buying a single. Similar, yeah. similar yeah. analogy. Similar you can, analogy. You can you can see that. You can, yep. It's it's great. Is there any part of it that's been truly rewarding for you? That being oh, every part of it. There's no. I couldn't pick out one particular no. thing. Working with people is the most rewarding yeah. thing. Um, seeing them, you know, evolve and succeed is absolutely a joy. Um, I, I, a quick story: when I was I was nominated for a Canadian Urban Music Award, yes, yes. and many years ago, and the one of the reporters before my category came up. So, so Farley, I, I was, you know, you're on Canadian Idol, you're on national TV, this award is a shoe in you're going to win it for sure. But in that same nomination list were Mark Strong and Gemini, who had G98 now, the word flow, yes. who I was afforded the great opportunity, oh, sorry, I my chair, uh, afforded the great opportunity to, um, to, to hire them at Flow and give them opportunity, it was it was great because um, they were in a category nominated with me, and I said to the reporter, "Well, you tell me, should I feel a greater sense of joy if I win the award, yeah. or if somebody that I gave an opportunity to wins the award?" And the latter is absolutely the truth for me. You know, I love the idea of creating opportunities for others. From Canadians to you, thank you.
that's, well, that's really it, I thank Canada, entertainment, sports, and people. That's what I do. That's what I'll always do. And you know, it's it's been fun. And it will keep being fun Absolutely. because you make it fun. You do. You yeah, I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Sure. And you see that. You see that in the way you treat people and in the way that you execute all of your business and everything. It's always a pleasure working with you and we saw that getting to know you on Canadian Idol and everything. You know, you always treated everybody with the utmost respect and motivation and everything. Well, so, equals. Yeah, you know, so it was always it was always a pleasure watching watching you. So and from Canada, you know, we say thank you for being yeah, Canadian sure. and and for all of your work, and now you're getting your own piece of Scarborough and your own piece of the sidewalk, and which is also this weekend going to benefit the Hospital Foundation and the Kaleidoscope Ball, then you're going to be honored and everything. So congratulations. Thank you very that. much. You can find all of Farley Flex's initiatives in this week's article in the description below. And as always, be graceful. Thank you so much. And, and, and we hope we wish you the best and have so much fun.